Here is a before and after situation. First we see an unreinforced road formation. The subgrade cannot withstand the loads and extreme rutting occurs. Whereas with a geogrid used to reinforce the subbase, the rebuilt road will withstand the imposed loads with minimal rutting, even though the surface is unsealed. In this highway project, a geogrid is used at the base of the road formation. Again, it is important that the roles of geogrid are overlapped, as any gap can result in potential high rutting and cracking. The road is then built up with carefully selected aggregate material. The grading specification of the aggregate and its compaction are key. These two factors determine the performance of the road formation. Geogrids provide a reinforcing function through interaction with the imported backfill, which is generally 40 millimeters minus well-graded gravel. One type of interaction is known as interlocking, where the granular fill interlocks into the open apertures of the geogrid. The interlock stops the aggregate from sliding sideways under load. It also spreads the load over a wider area, creating a more stable, stronger aggregate layer. In sub-base applications, the geogrid must have strength in multiple directions because vehicle loads are dispersed in every direction. Geogrids have open apertures. When aggregate is placed on top, it interlocks with the geogrid's apertures. Interlock helps control the lateral movement of aggregate. It stops it from sliding sideways and makes the whole formation stronger. This mechanically stabilized layer spreads the load over a wider area. The road design therefore requires less paving thickness to achieve the same performance. It also reduces differential settlement. The sub-base reinforcement design philosophy for roads is also used in other applications, such as railways, hard stand areas such as container yards and airport tarmacs, car parks, haul roads such as in mines, temporary applications such as working platforms for civil construction piling rigs. We will now examine the reinforcement function within retaining walls. Retaining walls are near vertical walls, by definition 70 to 90 degrees, commonly used in civil engineering projects. They reduce the horizontal area needed by sloping embankments. A common example is the walls around bridge abutments. In level 3, we saw that retaining walls can have a variety of different facing systems and the connection detail between the facing system and a reinforcing element is key to the design. Geogrids are the most commonly used geosynthetic reinforcing product for retaining walls. Here is a typical cross-section of a geosynthetic reinforced retaining wall. Geogrids are used in horizontal planes. They are connected to the wall face and interact with the soil to hold the wall in place. Here are the geogrid layers during construction. They are connected to the wall face and extend back into the soil. The distance the geogrid extends back into the soil is one of the key parameters of the overall system design. Note also that adjacent roles are not required to overlap. In a completed structure, the geogrid cannot be seen. It is buried in the soil behind the wall face. Here, a finished structure uses pre-cast concrete panels as a retaining wall above a steel tunnel. The concrete panels are held in place with a geogrid. 
Geogrids can be used in a wide range of applications, such as freeze-thaw conditions. The engineer needs to take into account the environment in which the wall is to exist. In this case, alpine. Other environments may have different soil chemical and physical properties. Here is a typical bridge abutment structure with full height concrete panel facing. It demonstrates some of the key design characteristics such as the vertical spacing between the geogrid layers. A retaining wall typically has the following failure modes. External stability or bearing failure of the underlying soil. Sliding out at the base, overturning, internal stability. When designing in consideration of these issues, an engineer can use a geogrid solution to address the internal stability issue. Failure principles for retaining walls are similar to those for embankments. When the bearing capacity of the foundation is insufficient to carry the load of the soil block and facing wall, failure will occur. Sliding failure is where the friction between the reinforced soil and subgrade is low and the retaining wall can simply slide sideways. Overturning is the most common failure mode for retaining walls. The horizontal earth pressure behind the wall exceeds the capacity of the geogrids to restrain it. The wall will rotate forward, pivoting on its base. Inadequate drainage can increase the horizontal earth pressure. Vertical loads acting on top of the wall also contribute to horizontal load pressure and must be designed for. A conventional retaining system uses thick, heavy walls made from masonry and concrete. They resist lateral earth pressure by virtue of their large mass. Reinforced soil walls use geogrids to anchor the facing system, the wall, to the backfill and provide the tensile element necessary to resist lateral earth pressure. To ensure correct design using a geogrid in a retaining wall, the engineer needs to specify the vertical spacing between geogrid layers, the horizontal anchorage length and the connection strength between the geogrid and the facing system. A traditional retaining wall relies on gravity. The wall base is extremely thick to resist earth pressure. It takes longer to build and requires more labour. The geosynthetic reinforced retaining wall uses a thinner facing system, allowing a faster and more economical construction. This approach gives engineers flexibility to create walls in difficult and confined construction sites. As well as the geosynthetic reinforcement, retaining walls need to be built on an adequate footing. In this instance, you can see precast concrete panels placed on a strip footing. The panels are temporarily propped, awaiting soil fill. When the wall facings are initially erected, they are cast in geogrids with short tailings. As the soil layers are placed, longer geogrid layers are mechanically connected to the existing tails. Every facing system has a different connection detail. 